So you wake up one morning and your space is curved. Your first thought is, well, how curved? Is my space slightly curved or is it seriously curved? Happily, your pet two-dimensional crab has an easy way to find out. Here's how to measure the curvature of your space. Remember when our two-dimensional crab moved an equal distance in every possible direction and measured how much space it covered? It found that when it moved one crab length in every possible direction, it covered 3.14 crabs worth of space. If you recall, you can count the number of crabs that fit into the space it covers. There's a crab in the middle, with half a crab above it, half a crab below it, two more half crabs either side, plus some small bits of a crab. That's a total of three and a bit crabs worth of space. 3.14 crabs worth, to be precise. When the crab moved two crab lengths in every possible direction, it covered 12.57 crabs worth of space. When it moved three crab lengths, it covered 28.27 crabs worth of space. When it moved four crab lengths, it covered 50.27 crabs worth of space. And when the crab moved five crab lengths in every possible direction, it covered 78.54 crabs worth of space. For the mathematically minded crab, it's easy to find the formula that fits this progression. Whenever the crab moves r crab lengths in every possible direction, it covers pi r squared crabs worth of space. It's even easier for us, with our God's eye view of the crab's two-dimensional space, to find the formula. Every time the crab moves an equal distance in every possible direction, it carves out a circle of space, and the area of the circle is pi r squared. The point is that even without our God's eye perspective, the crab can find the formula v equals pi r squared, and from that 2 in the formula, determine that its universe is two-dimensional. But everything I've said so far assumes a flat universe. What if the crab's universe is curved? Let's imagine that our two-dimensional crab is in a spherical two-dimensional space. Our crab is feeling pretty confident these days that it knows everything there is to know about itself and its universe. It knows that it's a two-dimensional crab in a two-dimensional space, and it knows how to prove that it's a two-dimensional crab in a two-dimensional space. For old time's sake, it decides to test the two-dimensionality of its universe once again. So it goes for a walk. It moves r equals 1 crab length in every possible direction, knowing that it'll cover v equals pi r squared, which is 3.14 crabs worth of space. And sure enough, it finds that it has covered 3.13 crabs worth of space. Well, near enough. Even a weirdly precise crab can't get too worried about an imprecision of less than half a percent. OK, next it moves r equals 2 crab lengths in every possible direction, imagining that it'll cover v equals pi r squared, which is 12.57 crabs worth of space. And it finds that it has covered 12.38 crabs worth of space. Now, that is a little worrying. That's a 1.5% discrepancy. Something's not right here. Nonetheless, the crab presses on, moving r equals 3 crab lengths in every possible direction. Instead of covering v equals pi r squared, which is 28.27 crabs worth of space, it finds that it has covered 27.36 crabs worth of space, fully 3% less than expected. The further the crab moves, the greater the discrepancy. Moving r equals 4 crab lengths, the crab covers 47.39 crabs worth of space, over 5% less than the formula v equals pi r squared predicts. Moving r equals 5 crab lengths, it covers 71.62 crabs worth of space, over 8% less than predicted. And then things start to go seriously awry. 
moving r equals six crab lengths the crab covers 98.98 crabs worth of space instead of 113.10 moving r equals seven crab lengths it covers 128.27 crabs worth of space instead of 153.94 moving r equals eight crab lengths it covers 158.21 crabs worth of space instead of 201.06 and by the time the crab is moving r equals nine crab lengths in every possible direction, it's covering over 25% less space than the formula v equals pi r squared predicts, 187.50 crabs worth instead of 254.47. The crab is perplexed. What's going on? Our curious crab begins to wonder whether its universe is truly two-dimensional after all. Since it's a mathematically minded crab, it draws a graph. It plots the amount of space it actually covered, v, against the distance it moved in every possible direction, r. That's the red line. On the same axes, it plots the amount of space it anticipated covering, v equals pi r squared. That's the blue line. The two lines aren't so far apart, at least at first. So maybe the crab space is approximately two-dimensional, whatever that means. The crab also plots the amount of space it would anticipate covering if its space were one-dimensional, that's v equals 2 pi r, and the amount of space it would anticipate covering if its space were three-dimensional, that's v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. These lines really are a long way from the crab's measurements. So the crab space is definitely closer to two-dimensional than one-dimensional or three-dimensional. Then the crab has an idea. Maybe its space has a fractional number of dimensions. Since the red line for its measurements is somewhere between the blue line for a one-dimensional space and the blue line for a two-dimensional space, Maybe its universe has somewhere between one and two dimensions. But that doesn't work either. The best fit the crab can come up with is a 1.9 dimensional universe. The line for this universe plotted in green is certainly closer to the line for its measurements plotted in red. But still, it's not an exact match. It starts too low and ends too high. No matter what number of dimensions the crab tries, there's no way to explain how the amount of space it actually covers is related to the distance it moved. But our crab is nothing if not persistent. If the formula that fits the measurements isn't r squared or r to the 1 or r cubed or even r to the power of 1.9, then some combination of powers, r to the 1, r squared, r cubed, r to the 4th, and so on, must work. So the crab does a polynomial analysis and finds that a formula with just two terms, pi r squared with a small r to the 4th correction, fits its measurements much better. Add one more term, a tiny r to the power of 6 correction, and the fit is pretty precise. Finally, the crab has its formula for v. v equals pi r squared minus 0 0.0115 r to the fourth plus 0 0.0000168 r to the power of 6. So what's going on here? The crab's universe seems two-dimensional. v equals pi r squared fits the crab's measurements reasonably closely. But there's something else that's going on that requires a small correction in r to the fourth and a tiny correction in r to the power of six. Suddenly the crab cries, Eureka! That something else that's going on, it realizes, is curvature. The crab's universe is two dimensional, but it's curved. To us, with our God's eye view of the crab's two-dimensional space, it's pretty easy to see what's going on. It's obvious to us that the curvature of the sphere is going to affect how much space the crab covers, moving an equal distance in every possible direction. We can even calculate the formula. For a sphere of radius a, the amount of space the crab covers, v, 
varies with the distance it moves in every possible direction, r, according to v, equals 2 pi a squared into 1 minus cos r over a. If you want to know how to derive this formula, take a look at the notes at the end of the full article for this episode. As ever, the link's in the show notes. Without going too deeply into the algebra, the cosine in our formula can be expanded into a power series. Cos r over a equals 1 minus r over a squared over 2 factorial plus r over a to the fourth over 4 factorial minus r over a to the power of 6 over 6 factorial and so on, which gives us v equals pi r squared minus pi over 12a squared r to the fourth plus pi over 360a to the fourth r to the power of 6 and so on. You might have noticed from my images of the Crab's universe that one crab length equals two blue cells on the sphere, and that the circumference of the sphere is 60 blue cells. This makes the radius of the sphere a equals 15 over pi, which is 4.77 crab lengths. Plugging this value into our formula for v gives v equals pi r squared minus pi over 12 times 4.77 squared r to the fourth plus pi over 360 times 4.77 to the fourth, r to the power of 6, and so on. And that gives us v equals pi r squared minus 0.01158 r to the fourth plus 0.00000168 r to the power of 6. Does that look familiar? It's the formula the crab arrived at through its polynomial analysis of its measurements. We can see from our God's eye perspective that the crab is in a spherical two-dimensional space with a radius of 15 over pi, but the crab can see it too from within its universe. From the two in its formula, it knows that its space is two-dimensional, and it knows that the second term in the formula for a spherical two-dimensional space is minus pi over 12a squared, where a is the radius of curvature. So from that second term in its formula, minus 0.01115, it knows that minus pi over 12a squared is equal to minus 0.0115, which means that a equals the square root of pi over 12 times 0.0115, which is 4.77 crab lengths. Ingeniously, a crab has measured not only the dimensionality of its space too, but also the radius of curvature of its space, 4.77 crab lengths, from inside its universe. The crab's method for measuring the curvature of space isn't limited to two-dimensional space. It also works in three-dimensional space, or four-dimensional space, or space with any other number of dimensions, including fractional dimensions. Here's a general formula for how much space the crab would cover moving an equal distance r in every possible direction in d-dimensional space. It's v equals pi to the d over 2 over d over 2 factorial r to the power of d into 1 minus uppercase r over 6d plus 2 r squared and so on. In this formula, uppercase r is a more general measure of the curvature of a space, called the Ricci scalar curvature. After all that algebra and all those numbers, let's remember why curvature matters. Einstein's general theory of relativity predicts that matter curves space-time. If the hypergraph of Wolfram physics is to be a true representation of the evolution of space over time, then matter must curve the hypergraph too. To determine whether that's true, we're going to need a way to measure the curvature of a hypergraph. And that's what our crap has done for us today. It has given us a method for measuring the curvature of space from inside space. It's a method that'll work just as well for measuring the curvature of the hypergraph from inside the hypergraph. The other thing we're going to need is a way to measure how much matter there is in a particular region of the hypergraph. It's all very well being able to measure the curvature of the hypergraph, 
But how are we going to know whether the matter in that region of the hypergraph is giving the right amount of curvature if we don't know how much matter there is? In my next episode, I'll finally get to that crucial question for Wolfram physics. What is matter in the hypergraph? Thanks for listening to The Last Theory. Join me for fresh insights into Wolfram physics every other week. Subscribe to the free newsletter, podcast or YouTube channel at lasttheory.com. After all, this might be the most fundamental scientific breakthrough of our time.